You've probably played colony sims like RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress before, and if you're watching this series, you're probably curious about how to make a game like that. In this series of tutorials, we're going to be going over making all the necessary parts for a colony sim game in Godot 4. Just a little disclaimer, this series isn't intended for complete beginners, but even if you're brand new, you'll probably learn a few things about grids and AI through the series. Just be warned, things might get a little bit complex. We're going to start with the most basic thing right off the bat, the grid system. Godot has a built-in tile map system, but I don't really like using it, so we're just going to make our own. Create a new 2D scene and name it Main, and then create another Node 2D and name it Grid. Give each of these nodes their own scripts. Add a reference to the grid in the main script, and then switch over to the grid script. Give it the class name Grid, and add these variables. Width and height are going to represent the size of the grid in cells, and cell size will be the size of each cell in pixels. Since the basic icon.svg in Godot 4 is 128 by 128, we'll just default to 128 for now. Next up, create a dictionary named grid to store ourselves in. This will basically be full of vector2 keys corresponding to a grid position, and we'll store whatever is currently in that cell. This could be a colonist, a building, a tree, whatever you want. Next up, add the generate grid function. For this, we're going to create a 2D grid. Here's a little graphic for how this works. For each x value in the width, we go all the way down every y coordinate, and in each one of the cells, we set the grid position as a key in the dictionary. Right now, we're just setting it to null to indicate that the space is empty right now. Next up, we're going to add two helper functions. The first we'll call grid to world, and it'll take a position as an input. This function will just take this position and multiply it by the cell size to give us the world position in pixels. The other function, which we'll call world to grid, is going to do the opposite. It'll just give us our world position divided by our cell size to give us our grid position. We also add the floor function so that it rounds it down to the nearest grid position so that we don't get decimals in our grid coordinates. The last thing that we need to do is go back to the main script and make sure that we call our grid generate grid function. This next step is only for debug purposes, feel free to skip it. It's just to show our grid being created. Add a boolean variable named show debug and set it as export so that you can change it in the inspector. Add the following code. All this is doing is making rectangles and labels at each grid space when it creates the grid. Make sure to tick on show debug and when you run your game it should look like this. And now that we have our grid created, that's it for this one. I'm going to try to keep these as short and easy to understand as possible. Next up we'll create our camera controller, so I'll see you in that one.